Nintendo Switch OLED. Uh, this will be, as of this recording, my first one. So, let's check and see what's going on. Upon initial inspection here, the port looks absolutely fine. It's solid, nothing's broken. So, I was a little worried about that actually because I don't have these ports. They are different than the Nintendo Switch regular. Let's stick it up to the power supply and show you what's it, what it's doing. Okay, watching channel one on the meters. Stick power to it. We're getting a 0.13 amp. So, on one side, on the other side, same deal. So, I actually had no idea what this could be. My guess, based on like the Nintendo Switch, is possibly an M92T36 issue. But we'll have to open this up, uh, do some inspecting, and see what the heck's going on. Okay, first impressions. It's a little bit different. I don't think I'm going to be able to test the M92T36 without pulling the whole board. The only chip that I see really uh, that would be involved in the power circuitry would be the VQ24193, which is right by the ports. That black square right by the port. Uh, so it looks like M92T36 is probably going to be on the other side of the board. And we're going to have to pull the board. So I will come back when I'm done pulling the board. Okay, the board is now the housing. Pretty cool looking thing. Getting this port out of the housing is quite... Well, it's challenging. I wouldn't say it's like overly challenging, but it definitely wants to be stuck in there. Should be interesting to get it back in the port. I mean, in, in the housing. Anyway, let's do some uh, testing. And what we're going to look for is the N92 T36, which we know is the same as the switch. And then we're going to do some testing around it. This is literally the first one I have seen. So, and I had to look at a teardown video to even learn how to take it apart. So, let's find us a ground point and test capacitors we're going to do the same thing as we do on the nintendo switch we're going to follow the capacitor lines and test the sides that are going to the chip and if it has two side uh, two lines going to the chip one of those sides should not be shorter to ground all right so this one appears to be shorter This one appears to be shorted. It has only one line going, so it should not be shorted. This one appears to be shorted. Well, we're shorted all over the place. And this one appears to be shorted. All right, so I think we have found our culprit. Okay, so we have shorts all around the N92 T36 on this uh, Nintendo Switch OLED. And we kind of know what we need to do next. Okay, we're set up for removal. While I'm setting up my equipment, we throw up my expected temperatures for this job. As always, these temperatures are subject to change if the job changes, but I don't expect the job to change. I don't usually come off these temperatures for a Nintendo Switch, though this is the first OLED I'm working on, so do you have to preface that with a possibility? As always, these temperatures are brought to you by the Amazon Associate links in the description. If you click on one of those links and buy any of those pieces of equipment, or if you buy anything during that particular session, a small portion of that purchase will go to supporting the channel and will not cost you an extra dime. We greatly appreciate it. All right, switch you back to microscope. Add some flux, which is also in the description. Let's pull our M92 T36 and then we will test and make sure that the shorts are have been relieved. successful pull. Set it aside, let's grab our multimeter and test our capacitors again. Okay, this one has two lines, so I accidentally made contact with that one, so don't be alarmed. And it appears we are now clear. Very good. 
put our new chip on and see if we remain clear. Here we're watching for the center pad to wet. We need the center pad to wet so that we'll grab the chip when we place it. Do not try to place the chip before the center pad wets. We will blow it off into the ninth dimension. Okay, make sure it has grabbed before you let go. There we go. Center it up. Drying really fast. Okay, move the heat, hold the chip down, press down, and done. Check and see if there needs to be any cleanup. I don't know if there's anything bridging and I don't see anything right away. So we are free and clear to test. Make sure our shorts have not come back or no new shorts have come back. All right, very good. Clean up and then we'll perform a test. Let's take a quick inspection. I know it was really hard for you to see, but I need to have a look. Just to make sure, no bridging, no micro bridges or anything of that nature. And it looks pretty good. All right, let's have a quick look see and see what we're doing now. Okay, that looks very familiar to me. Try the other side. And again, that looks very familiar to me. Looks like it uh, will display very similar to the Nintendo Switch. Let's see, I should be able to attach the battery too. It's the same battery. Grab our OEM charger to activate. And just see what we see. Seems to be jumping up in amperage. Seems to be booting. That would be my guess. Again, never worked on this particular switch model, but that looks uh, very familiar as well. So, excellent. The next thing we need to do is reassemble uh, the OLED switch and go from there. Okay, we have it partially reassembled, everything but the antennas really. And let's check and see if our OLED switch will boot up on my battery. 0.46, battery symbol. Man, that is a pretty gorgeous screen. And it looks like we are good. We are charging at 0.1 amp. Let's flip it around and make sure we're charging on the other side. And we are very good yep that's a pretty screen man what do you have to say looks good all right we'll reassemble entirely and let it charge on its own battery for a while and then we'll perform some more testing okay as you can see we are fast charging on the USB meter and we are charging our joy cons let's test to make sure our joy cons are connecting wirelessly and they are excellent. Let's go home, go to settings. And to make sure we're picking up our internet. And we are excellent. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do, I don't have a game card reader to test gaming, so that will have to be done by the shop. I need to order one, but I left my test game card in a client's uh, device and never got it back so unfortunately with that so 
I will uh, set this up for dock test and we'll be right back. Okay, and as you can see, we are docking. So that's really going to be it for this repair. If you need one of these repairs executed, uh, check or wait around for the end cards or check the description below. And if you enjoyed this video, check out that one. I'll see you there.